Zippo Nation Podcast, episode 473. Feedback on Earth-based science fiction games. Welcome, citizens, to Meeple Nation. Grab your favorite beverage, pull up a chair, warm up those dice, and join us at the game table as we discuss board games and the board gaming world. Each week, the hosts of Meeple Nation share their love for board games and the amazing memories that come from playing games with some very outstanding people. Let us now join our hosts in their natural habitat, the game table. We are the hosts of Meeple Nation. I'm Nathan Howard. I'm Dave Holliday. I'm Logan Howard. I'm Andy Holliday. And I'm Douglas Stewart. Meeple Nation podcast is sponsored by GameToppersLLC.com. GameToppers is a fantastic modular product that is designed to solve a whole host of gameplay issues. You need a better table to play on? Pick up a Game Topper of any size. They're designed to go over the top of your table and convert it into a premium deluxe gaming space. Need a high quality mat for your table or to take on your travels? There are none better than the ones at GameToppersLLC.com. Three millimeters thick with a stitched edge featuring art by some of the industry's leading artists. You can also get leg kits so you can convert that Game Topper into a standalone table. And they also have dining leaves so you can leave games set up and still use it as a table. So upgrade every experience you want to have in your game room with a new Game Topper. GameToppersLLC.com. Have you ever been driving down the road, listening to a podcast and wonder, I wonder what those guys are really like? If you're curious about that, jump on over to MeepleNation.com. You can find information about all of us there. There are blogs. There are bios of us, including our awesome bloggers. There's a link to our Instagram feed that's full of pictures. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at MeepleNation at gmail.com. We are excited to hear from you and will gladly respond. If you like the podcast and want to support the podcast, we would greatly appreciate any support you would want to give us. We have a Patreon link that is on the top of our page, or you can go to patreon.com slash meeple underscore nation. Feel free to support us in any way you can. We would greatly appreciate that. So you can find all that and more at meeplenation.com. We are the hosts of Meeple Nation. I'm Nathan Howard. I'm Dave Holliday. Logan Howard. I'm Andy Holliday. And I'm Douglas Stewart. This week, we are digging deeper into some of the Earth-based sci-fi games and talking mostly about the input that we got from some of you guys. We put the question out there to the Meeple universe, to the Meepleverse, And we got some feedback that we wanted to talk about. With that, let's get started. So we asked the question, what are your favorite Earth-based science fiction games? Which I know we talked about a couple episodes back, being Earth-based and science fiction, and how that differed from space science fiction. Off-Earth. Off-Earth science fiction, yeah. So I think as we talked, I think we kind of looped the moon in as part of that science fiction but i think if we went beyond the moon it was considered space the moon is closer it belongs to earth it belongs to earth yeah now it in the meeple verse is this earth prime i think it is we think it is yeah i think yeah. we're earth 47 is this earth 47 yeah. that actually makes a little more sense okay we'll go with that i'm surrounded by nerds <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> So let's start off with Eric. Eric mentioned Excavation Earth, and he says, but I haven't played it yet, so I don't know if it's any good. Well, Eric, you're in good company. None of us have played it either. (laughs) Yeah, none of us have played it either. So Excavation Earth is a one to four player game. A century from now, all that remains on Earth is the detritus that humanity left behind. The races of a neighboring solar system have a penchant for artifacts left behind by extinct races. In Excavation Earth, you lead one of these races of alien explorers on their quest to excavate rare human artifacts and curate ultimate art collections to sell off. So far, this sounds pretty interesting. I think this is one that uh, I'm kind of curious about. I'm going to go look see if it's available right now. If you do, you have to invite Eric over. Yeah, Eric, come on over. We'll we'll get this to the table. 
<laughs> I would be curious to see what the rare earth artifacts, human artifacts would be. I'm not sure what would be considered a rare earth human artifact. Well, some of the pictures are, there's like a, a hazard sign. There's a mounted deer head. So some of those are considered artifacts or artifacts, as Dave says. Artifacts. Soccer balls, all sorts of license plates, all sorts of rarities that we would take for granted. It sounds pretty fun, I think. I like the idea of the theme, you know, exploring what once was a a thriving civilization and and see what we can salvage. And, you know, you think back of archaeologists of what they dig up and what they get all excited about finding a left finger bone of Logan back in the day. It'd be interesting to kind of look back and say, what would, uh, you know, would they try to read our language and try to decipher what LOL means or try to understand our writing? Kind of an interesting idea, but the game looks kind of in- intriguing. What, what would they say if they uncovered one of our game rooms? Is it a place of worship? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a holy symbol on the wall right there. So some thick Carmack. It's true. But yeah, no, I mean, I yeah, it. it's, you know, there's idols all around us at the tables, kind of an altar. Yeah, very much. No, I, I love that idea. I, I love that idea. Like what, what would archaeologists think of the sort of common everyday things that they were to find if they were digging up earth in the future? That's, that's pretty cool. Damien says, Android is great, although it's half on the moon as well. And uh, Damien will allow it. We're, we're going to allow the moon on this one. We're going to have to because there's another one coming up that's also on the moon. Not only is it half on the moon, it is fully on my shelf of shame because I've owned it for like 10 years and have yet to have played it. You have this one on your shelf? I do. I think this one's harder to find. Well, I know Android Netrunner is, and this is kind of a precursor to that. And I think this one's harder to find. So yeah, if you've got it on your shelf, we need to bust that out. I have a ton of Android Netrunner stuff too. And yeah, it's all at my house. The BGG description of Android says, Android is a board game of murder and conspiracy set in a dystopian future. Detectives travel between the city of New Angeles and Moon Colony Highland, chasing down leads, calling in favors and uncovering the sinister conspiracy beneath it all. I'm, I'm kind of in. That, that's, a, that's a good hook. That's a good line. I like that. Yeah, it sounds interesting. I have uh, Android Infiltration, which is also based all based in that same universe where you're trying to infiltrate the corporate headquarters, break in as far as you can, and then make your way out before you're discovered and caught. I generally just like the idea, the if you want to call it the theme of you know the conspiracy that you're trying to figure out and fighting against or whatever, right? Makes me think, I don't know if you remember, Nathan, but do you remember when we used to, we didn't play it very often, at least I didn't, but the Illuminati card game? I don't think I actually ever played this one as well, but I know that Corey DeCaria had it and uh, they played it several times. It always seemed like it was in play when I showed up. Yeah, I remember playing it. I think I only ever got to play it twice, but this is like over 20 years ago. And yeah, it was down in the basement at the DeCaria's parents' house in their their old place in, in Ogden. And it was fun. It was a game that I always looked forward to whenever it came up. And again, I think it was mostly fun for me because of the idea of it, right? I honestly don't remember the gameplay at all. I just remember liking that topic. And this seems similar to that. I don't think the gameplay is going to be anywhere near, no, but just but that idea, the right? Idea. The conspiracy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, that seems like another one. And we're going to talk a little more Android here in a minute, I think. All right, Eric, I ordered Excavation Earth. Did you? And the second wave expansion. Nathan, you're my hero. John kind of joined our thoughts and said how much he liked Underwater Cities. We talked about that just last week. I think that was on more than one of our top fives. Yeah, it was one of my honorable mentions. And the only reason it's not higher is just because I've only been able to play it once and it's killing me because I really want to play this again. That is definitely something we should remedy. Yeah, for sure. Underwater Cities is one of the funner games on this list, but I haven't played a ton of Earth-based sci-fi games. And Underwater Cities is one that I own and have played several times. As far as this theme goes, it's one of my favorites for sure. This was the game that my daughter was bringing, had started bringing a boy to game night. And this was the first game we played with him. It was kind of a trial by fire scenario. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, usually we, we start out light and it was like, nope, we're going heavy. Throwing him in the deep end. <laughs> yeah, definitely not one of those gateway games. Right? No, definitely not a gateway game. That's trial. one way to scare away the boys. You know, and I was surprised he actually did pretty well with it. Trial by fire with underwater cities. <laughs> it's to me, it just it brings so much uniqueness. The ideas of unique, the gameplay, the mechanics, like all of it is just it was it was new 
which to me puts it right, th- right up there at the top. Yeah, that's an awesome pick. Eric also gave us some additional feedback, which was greatly appreciated. He thought of Risk 2210, It's a Wonderful World, and 51st State, and New Angeles. But It's a Wonderful World only kind of. Only kind of. No, I, I, I think It's a Wonderful World counts. I, I don't agree. know that the theme on this one is super, super strong, but it's definitely Earth-based sci-fi. Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah. I would say the theme's so light. You take the theme out, it doesn't change anything about the gameplay. Right, but all the cards Correct. are still based science fiction. Yeah. Yeah, it still is. That is still the theme they chose for the game, and it definitely works. Yeah, Risk 2210 was uh, one of the funner versions of Risk. It had more of a set time limit that didn't let the game go on forever, which I thought was something Risk desperately needed. And It's a Wonderful World is a great suggestion. 51st State is one that I'm looking forward to playing because, Doug, you have everything in that, right? I do. And I gave that some love when we were talking about our top Earth-based sci-fi games. Right. I love 51st State. I think it's a fantastic game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. one of my favorite games. And every time I play it, it actually grows. It goes higher and higher on my list. I really like 51st State. That's a great one. New Angeles, I'm not familiar with at all. From 2016, the largest, richest, and most diverse city on Earth. New Angeles is home of the space elevator that rises along its bucky weave tether and connects us to Luna. In New Angeles, you gain control of the mega corporations, then you use your wealth to influence and create more wealth and more influence. I'm pretty certain that this is a tie-in. We were talking about New New Angeles from the description of Android. I'm pretty sure this is a tie-in. So this is this is part of the Android series of oh, games okay. by Fantasy Flight Games. It's a pretty heavy game, 3.24 out of 5. Yeah, I just noticed that. And the time frame, that has, has your kind of a time frame, Dave. Two to four hours. Oh, yeah. You can enjoy that game without <laughs> me. Uh, Matt was also right there talking about Android. He specifically was talking about Netrunner. Uh, he said the bluffing, the deck building, the hacking theme, it's all excellent. And this is one that I looked up when I read that because I was like, those things to me, they sound excellent. Yeah. So Matt actually taught me this game just a little while back. This is what motivated me to go and borrow all of Nathan's uh, Netrunner stuff uh, because I'm in the process of learning and figuring out how to deck build for this. It's super, super cool. It's like one player plays as the hackers. And the other player takes on the role of the mega corpse. And it's a head to head game that uses sort of that fantasy flight deck building kind of a lot of the same things that you see in some of their LCGs and deck builders. And it works really, really good. This is a game that has quite a following. There's a lot of people out there that really like this game quite a bit. And it's lamented a little bit that it's out of print. Um, because stuff for this game is hard to find. There are some third-party groups that have picked this up and are still trying to keep that community going uh, because there's a lot of passion for it. But because there's not a publisher actively printing and getting product on the shelves for Netrunner, um, it has suffered as a result, which is really too bad because after playing it, this is a phenomenal game. Netrunner's fantastic. I remember enjoying the game quite a bit, and that was back in the high time of the customizable card games, deck building, kind of lost its luster because there was other games that were hogging up that deck building slot at the time. But I had several decks that I built, and then it also came down to if I'm the only one that has it and there was no one to play with, it's kind of tough to play a a head-to-head game solo. Yeah. And and there's, boy, we could go down a rabbit hole here. There's kind of a whole conversation to be had about Fantasy Flight games and their competitive or, you know, head-to-head battle style LCGs. They have not had any of them endure the test of time. So Legend of the Five Rings, Game of Thrones, Netrunner, all of these head-to-head games have kind of gone the way of the Dodo, but all of their uh, cooperative ones are still alive and well, and they're actively developing for so kind of an interesting thing there i mean i know that's not what we're talking about here that makes me wonder though am i just a follower because the way you say that it sounds like you know the games that the people are continuing to get involved in like are the are less the head-to-head games right i generally don't go for those i mean cooperative games are also not my favorite but i'm generally going to be more more interested in a game where I'm working together with the people than I am going 1v1 in something else. Although I have had some great fun with a lot of 
a lot of those games. They're just down on my list. Reading about this one and watching some playthrough on it, it definitely got me excited. I think player count would be the big thing about why some of the games survive where others don't. I agree. I mean, it depends on your situation, but it's easier if you have a group of friends like you do to play Arkham or the living card game, right? Like you got a group to come play with it. It's much easier to do that instead of, hey, let's sit down, let's play this head to head game. And especially where there's other options out there that are way more customizable. Like if you get in Magic the Gathering and stuff like that, so many more cards out there. Yeah, and that head to head model is very successful for Magic. And there are several games out there, the Yu-Gi-Oh, the uh, Pokemon, those are still very Digimon. Su- Digimon, still all very successful head-to-head combat games. And so Fantasy Flight has tried to get into that, but it just hasn't hasn't thrived for them. Yeah, and that was that was the whole point, right? Was rather than having the endless chase of the collectible card games, that was the whole living card game appeal was that you would buy the decks of cards you would have everything for the game. You didn't have to chase stuff down or pay a lot of money for stuff. And they were really trying to appeal to people on that. But I think over time, when you, when it comes to the competitive arena, people just like the collectible or tradable card games more than than this living card game model. And then chasing that dragon. That's what people yeah. are really going yeah. for. Ooh, it's expensive. Having been, been a Magic the Gathering player back in my younger years, there is definitely a draw to that. There is the excitement of opening that booster pack to see what you got. Whereas you don't get that when you're just buying a pack of cards and you know what's in it. And I think there's, that is a draw. That's definitely a draw for, for some, even though it is expensive, you can spend an awful lot of money, which is why I got out of it buying cards that are, are the collectible card games. But I also understand the draw to that and why, why that's so appealing. It can almost be addicting to have to go in and and buy a booster as soon as you have, you know, payday hits, I'm going to go buy a box of booster packs and, Oh, and, and they bank on it. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. <laughs> they are absolutely wanting to feed that fire. Yeah, and oh. it is 100% an addiction. But I just found out about last Sol- Salkan. I think they call them like perfect fit sleeves, something like that. But they're sleeves that are designed to go inside another sleeve, but like hug the card so you could have a sleeve coming in from each direction. Because some of those magic decks, like you get some of those rare cards, they can be worth like hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And so they want to try to do everything they can to protect those cards double sleeving is a common practice with a lot of those more valuable magic and other tcg cards yeah it it baffled me when i was first told about it but it makes sense because if you're going to play with those cards as well as like collect them you want to keep them pristine well matt thank you for taking us down that rabbit hole (laughs) yeah and now monique she mentioned it's a wonderful world the resistance mechs versus minions room 25 dinogenics and tiny epic dinosaurs, and really anything with dinosaurs in the theme. Now, it doesn't surprise me that It's a Wonderful World is on Monique's list. I know that she loves this game. Last Hug of MeepleCon, she kicked our butts playing It's a Wonderful World. So It's a Wonderful World was going to be on my top five. I don't remember when we talked about this last week if I mentioned it for sure, but I wanted to. I just didn't. I'm kind of like Logan. I didn't really see the, the theme that much. I know the building's but when I play the game, I'm not really looking at the the names of the buildings and everything else, right? I just, I just don't have time. As far as the game goes, absolutely love it. It's it's one of my, just in general, top games. For me, the, the theme didn't necessarily... I don't scratch that itch of Earth-based science fiction game when I play it. It's a Wonderful World, which is the only reason it wasn't in my top five. Gotcha. I, yeah, and, and that makes sense. I, I, I get that. But dinosaur games, yes. Yeah, 100%. And she specifically mentions Dinogenics, and I gave that some love on our last episode too. I love Dinogenics. Dinosaur Island, Dinosaur World, and Dinogenics are the three big dinosaur park building games. Dinogenics is by far my favorite of those three. So mine was the world. I liked place, placing those hexes and like taking a tour with my Jeep through. I, I really liked that yeah. aspect. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And and the Jeeples are cool. And the yeah. way you do your tour through the mm-hmm. park, I really like that as well. It, it is very good. I still need to play Dinogenics. It has me very excited because I didn't know, but I love dinosaur games. Well, we do have Hug a MeepleCon coming up in about a month. And I'm pretty sure you're going to probably find a few players that be willing to, yeah, to get that to the for table. Sure. For sure. We played it actually at the last Hug of Meeple Con. We did. We had it at your house, Andy, and it, that was a success as well. So yeah, it's, uh, that one's really good. She also mentions here uh, Mechs versus Minions. I've only gotten this one to the table one time. I have it sitting on my shelf and I want to play it again so bad. I had a blast playing this game. 
Yeah, I I remember enjoying Mechs versus Minions quite a bit. I played it when it first came out. I uh, played it with Sam Aho, his copy, and uh, we played it and talked about that many years ago. But I remember really enjoying this game, wanting to play more, and I was excited that you have it on your shelf, Doug, because it is one that... And Mechs in general. Mechs in general has always kind of been an excitement for me. You know, uh, Tiny Epic Mechs. And even games like Robo Rally, where there is, you know, you're battling those robots. Um, Adrenaline. Adrenaline is one of those ones that I picked up just recently. It's an older game, but I haven't played it yet. One I'm looking forward to giving a try. Just any of those mech style games, I guess it takes me all the way back to Robotech, which was a staple back when I was a lad. Mechs versus Minions. Very much want to play that again. Yeah, and the only question I have on this one, because this is based on League of Legends. I don't is League of Legends Earth based. I, I actually don't know anything about League of Legends. So I'm I don't know if this is Earth based or not. But the game was really fun. And like you said, it has mechs in it. As far as I'm concerned, I'll allow it. Ashley mentions Isle of Cats and follows that with you can't go wrong with cats. And I, I guess strongly disagree. <laughs> and I guess that cats Isle of Cats is that uh do we decide, is that more fantasy or is that, uh, is that Earth-based science fiction? The fantasy would be as if you were getting rid of the cats on the ship to sell them off and sink the ship. That would be fantasy. I was thinking the fantasy was, it's a fantasy that anyone would want to save the cats. Maybe? Ashley would like to save the cats because you can't go wrong with cats. I mean, she's the reason why I backed it on Kickstarter initially. I know, and I say that just as we are preparing in less than 24 hours to welcome a cat into our home. I am so sorry. Me too. Ashley also mentions the quest for El Dorado uh, as a great racing game. And then she also mentioned that she loves Charterstone and would love to play uh, that through that again. So Charterstone, and we talked about that last week as being a great game. And I very much enjoyed my experience with Charterstone. I didn't realize that she had played that. Yeah, her, I, and Brent had played that game together, and uh, she was way excited about that. And I think we talked about it last week. Maybe I was wrong. She was very much wanted to get our family to play it. So we got the refresh pack, uh, flipped it over, and she brought it home. The four of us tried to play it. It bombed because uh, you know they both girls were in that high school age. They they would rather fight than play nice with each other. So, but that would be something we're trying again for sure. I'd be in. Brian mentions Welcome to the Moon. It's like we were talking about earlier where it still belongs to the Earth, so it's included. And then Fuse. So Fuse is excellent game. I thoroughly enjoy Fuse, where you diffuse all sorts of different bombs. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. Brian, good choice. Yeah, I like Fuse because it has the app timer. The moderator for the time will mock you if you're taking too long on your turns. <laughs> Fuse is a very good game, and it just has a new expansion out that's uh, expansion slash standalone newer version of Fuse, so give both of those a try. I think Brian nailed it with Welcome to the Moon. As far as like rolling rights and flipping rights, this is probably second on my list, only second to Twilight Inscription, which is a rolling right, which are both sci-fi themed. Welcome to the Moon. Well, you know, we talked about this last week as well, and it is great. It is a wonderful game, and I love the fact that it it changes things up. You're not playing the, the same basic game every single time, like a lot of the the flipping rights and rolling rights that are out there. Welcome to the Moon is definitely one of those. It's on my need to play list. It's been there for a while. As soon as we get an opportunity, I'd love to to check that one out. Kyle says, "Do post apocalyptic games count?" And the answer is yes, Kyle. Yes, they absolutely count. I think it depends on which one. Nah, it counts. If they're Earth-based, it counts. Well, so the, ones he, through, the ones he mentions here definitely count. So going through his list, zombies, that's where I'm like, that's flirting with the line. Everything else, yes. I think it depends on the zombies. So if they're like fantasy zombies, I'm a barbarian fighting zombies, then that would be fantasy. If you're talking, the, there's a virus that hit the Earth and you're in an urban situation and there are zombies that are wandering around the streets of the cities, I think that would be considered sci-fi. Yeah, and, and, I, and I was getting to the zombies part. I think the ones that he mentioned that were good for post-apocalyptic games, he mentions Fallout, Aftermath, Arctic Scavengers, 51st State, yes, Kyle, Outlive, and Radlands. Also, yes, I love Radlands. And then for zombies, he mentions Dead of Winter, Zombicide, or the Zombie Dice Brain Game. And yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. Some of those may be vergy on whether you consider those earth-based sci-fi games but the big one here is dead of winter and i'll allow it and i I think the takeaway from all of this is virgie 
is a great word, and I'm going to use that. Fergie is a great word. Thanks, Doug. When you can have Ronald Reagan with his ray gun, that's sci-fi. I'm sorry, but it just is. Oh, yeah. Zombicide's great. Zombicide is, as far as zombie games go, is my favorite zombie game. Doug may have created a monster with introducing us to Zombicide. May, may have? <laughs> like the, No. <laughs> and, and there's no us. It's just you. <laughs> he, he said a monster. Yeah, you introduced us and you created a monster. <laughs> it was an okay. absolutely accurate statement. I accept. But yeah, I would definitely agree with Kyle on these. These are great birth-based sci-fi games. And honestly, I love the post-apocalyptic theme. It's one of my favorite themes. Andy's statement, I'm going to go back to it. It was so true. It's not even Virgie. Okay, what, what was Virgie? Did I miss Virgie? <laughs> on the verge of totally, something. So you, Virgie, Doug said it. They really liked it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We want to thank everybody who left us some feedback uh, on social media. We're going to throw more questions like this out in the future. If you'd like to have kind of a discussion via the podcast with us, look for those questions on our Meeple Nation Off-Air Facebook group. We would love to hear from you in the future. This kind of concludes and wraps up our conversation that we've been having this episode and the one before about Earth-based sci-fi games. Are there any other games of note that you guys had kind of tucked in your back pocket that you wanted to talk about before we kind of close this up? So there were some games that we haven't had a chance to play yet. And so, I mean, I already talked about Adrenaline. And one that I'm really looking forward to is that time that you killed me. I'm really excited about this thing. And I may have even talked about it last week. I can't remember for sure. But this time travel game where you're going back into the past to try to eliminate uh, your opponent. I'm really excited about the theme for this. Doug, you have uh, both Burn Cycle and Steam Watchers. I'm very, very interested in both of those games. I am too. I just need to read those rule books. And then there's some games we've only played once, like Cloudspire. Cloudspire is a tower defense game, which just recently we played after the Empire, which sparked my memory of that Cloudspire was this tower defense game as well. After the Empire was great. But Cloudspire is also very fun. Chip theory game, a big heavy chips. I had a lot of fun playing that game. And also on that same kind of cloud theme, you had the Cloud Age, which is uh, kind of a cross between your steampunk where you're you're racing your, they're not necessarily zeppelins, but you're racing through the clouds to get to uh, gather some resources, do some pirating, and then Welcome to the Moon. I think we need to get that to the table for sure. We played it a couple of times, Andy, with Amara and uh, with Corey before he went back to New Jersey. Welcome to the Moon. It's a great flipping right. That and both of those cloud games, Cloud Spire and Cloud Age, we need to get to the table again, I feel. Do you have both of those on the shelves here? Yeah. I, I don't see them. Yeah. That you have both of those. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Cloud Spire looked really, really good to me, but it's a, it's a chip theory game, so it's really high production quality, and that production quality comes with a cost, and I can only afford one chip theory game uh, product line, and that's Too Many Bones. That's the one that I play. So I've wanted to check this one out for a long time. So when you get that out, I definitely want an invite because I'd love to play that. Yeah, those games were so heavy to pack. I mean, I picked mine up. <laughs> I picked mine up at SaltCon, so I didn't have to pay for that shipping. And after I picked up that box, I was very glad I didn't have to pay for that shipping because those Chip Theory games weigh a ton. Yes, they do. So that wraps up our discussion on talking about your feedback, and we appreciate the feedback that you've had for us. Until next time. We'll see you with your head in the clouds, or will they be based on Earth at the game table? Aren't clouds still on Earth? Yes, but they're not on our Earth. Earth. Yeah, because the moon is the distance, right? The moon moon is is a distance. This is Earth 47. You can go the distance. But so past the moon is no longer on Earth. The dark side of the moon. But how do you know other planets in the Meepleverse may not have clouds? Oh, that's true. Or maybe they have clouds, but you wouldn't want your head in them because they're poisonous. Earth Earth 12? Sure. It's our our multiverse. Thank you for listening and being a part of Meeple Nation. If you would be so kind as to follow, subscribe, share, and rate or review this podcast, it really helps to spread the fun. You can be more involved in supporting the podcast by joining the nation at patreon.com slash Meeple Nation, or you can find a link at the top of our webpage, meeplenation.com. And while you're there, 
Look at all our extra content. There are links to all our past episodes, a wide variety of blogs, pictures from our Instagram feed, and bios for all the hosts and our awesome bloggers. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all under Meeple Nation. If you would like to chat with the hosts or other members of the nation, you can join our Facebook group, Meeple Nation Off Air. We hope to see you again at a game night, a con, or maybe a suspense-driven evening of Werewolf. Thank you for listening and supporting Meeple Nation, and stay tuned for next week's episode. Thank you so much for listening. We very much want to thank our patrons who help keep the podcast running. I personally want to thank my co-hosts for all the help they provide with both content here on the podcast in addition to what we have available on our website. Without them, the podcast would not happen. If you too would like to support the podcast, you can join the nation at patreon.com forward slash meeple underscore nation. Or you can find a link to Patreon at the top of our webpage, meeplenation.com. If you have any questions, comments, or games you feel should be on our radar, you can always reach us at meeplenation at gmail.com. We can't wait to hear from you. I am grateful to Doug and Andy who helped me edit episodes. And I want to thank James and Kim Clark who do the editing on our blogs and on our webpage, which can be found at meeplenation.com. We want to thank Brain Detergent for our music. If you want to find more from him, you can follow his links that can be found on our webpage or simply search for Brain Detergent on YouTube to find more of his tracks. Thank you again for listening and being part of the Meeple Nation community. I've been known to swear a lot. I swear. I don't remember the next word. By the moon, stars, the sky. I swear I'll be there. <laughs> Wait, if, are we recording? Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, better or worse. <laughs> Something's the same. <laughs> Till death do us part. Oh. Oh, good. I love That's you nice. with every piece of my heart. Learn your boy band lyrics. Oh, good goodness. Is this a boy band? Pretty sure it's B. I thought it's yeah. 80s. Oh, it's a boy band. Which boy band? <laughs> From the 80s? No, that was, 90s. I, was that, was that all, for all, all, for all, all for one? All for one? No, it was all for one. I think it was all, all for one. one. Yeah. Educate me. I, I don't remember the 80s. Uh, yeah. It was in the 90s. All for one was in the 90s. Yeah, don't worry. By whom? It. New Kids on the Block was the 80s. Yeah, oh, come on, New dude. Kids on the Block. Good old Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> wow. Well, if people didn't think we were old before, they sure do now. Started out with some bloopers. Meeple Nation Podcast episode. You got to start over again. Meeple Nation Podcast episode 473. I think I was still talking. Meeple Nation I'm Podcast. Still, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> we're, 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 we're two minutes in and we haven't. Only a minute 30. Oh, all right. Or you can go to patreon.com slash meeple underscore Nate. Nate meeple underscore Nate. <laughs> Meeple now, underscore Nathan. Now, this is it's it's not about you. Nathan. <laughs> you can go to Meeple Na- oh, damn it. <laughs> you can do it. Come on, Nate. Meeple underscore Nation. Um that still kind of sounded like Nathan. It does. Meeple underscore nation. And it always just sounds like that's why I say it Nathan all the time. <laughs> Who picked Nation as a podcast name?